What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have new data that has came in from the models, and we have a new update from the National Hurricane Center that we need to show you. But before we get into that, I'm, uh, I've been looking at some of the stuff. The ASCAT has come out and confirmed that there is likely a closed circulation at the lower levels right now. So we'll have to wait and see what the NHC decides to designate this at around 10 p.m. E- uh, Central, 11 p.m. Eastern, if they're going to keep it in invest or if they're going to go for this to being a tropical depression. We'll have to hold off and wait and get that data later, but we need to show you this latest update from the National Hurricane Center because some of the wording on this, especially for Invest 95L, is quite disturbing in my opinion. Here's what we have going on. Showers and thunderstorms associated with an area of low pressure located over the central tropical Atlantic about 800 miles southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands has changed little in organization through the day. However, environmental conditions are conducive for further development and a tropical depression or tropical storm is forecast to form over the next day or so while the low moves at around 15 to 20 miles per hour. This is where we were before. We're going to go ahead and give you an earlier outlook to kind of give you a better understanding to this. Earlier, they were saying it was expected to form in a day or two, so maybe tomorrow, Wednesday at the latest. Now the NHC is basically jumping the gun, and they're saying it's expected to form within the next 24 hours. So that's pretty huge right there, already all by itself. But it's also moving through extremely conducive conditions. Like, We've talked about this earlier, and we'll show you the conditions again for those of you who are new, but it's going to be moving through extremely conducive conditions over the next seven days. So we'll have to wait and see what happens on that front, but here is the rather interesting part I wanted to share with you. Additional strengthening, possibly to a hurricane, is likely later this week while the system moves over the western portions of the tropical Atlantic near to or northeast of the northern Leeward Islands. I don't think I have seen very many NHC advisories, especially for, during an invest, saying that additional strengthening possibly to a, a hurricane is likely. That's telling me two things here. One, the NHC is very confident that this is going to be big. That's the first thing it's telling me. The second thing is is that this thing could potentially start organizing and developing by tonight. We'll have to keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel on all of those a- aspects right there, but it's not looking the best. Here's what we have going on for the formation chances. Once again, 90 and 100. 90% in the next 48 hours, 100 in the next 7 days. We'll have to wait and see how that goes, especially as we go into tonight. But I wanted to go ahead and start pulling up some new model runs that we absolutely need to share with you. So here is the EC, uh, European model right here. I will, before I show these models, I want to preface this real quickly. The models over the last couple of days have been incredibly all over the place, especially after five days out. Some saying it's going to hit the U.S., some saying it's staying out to sea, others saying it's going to hit North Carolina, Massachusetts, all that, all that stuff. After five days, I don't know what's going to happen. Just take what you see with every model with a grain of salt. We'll get to the hurricane models in a little bit. Those go out to five days. Those are more for intensity potential. But here's what we have for the operational. Here's the European forecast right here. The system really starts to organize and develop and strengthens to a Category 1 hurricane as it's approaching the Lesser Antilles. It moves north of the Leeward Islands. Leeward Islands could uh, potentially see some impacts from this. Based off of what I'm seeing, no matter what happens, the Leeward Islands are going to see some sort of impact, whether it's the outer bands, whether it's a little bit of surge, whether it's uh, maybe even a, a direct hit. We're not 100% sure on that. But what we do know is that they are going to see some sort of impact. But already we're down to a 943 millibar system as this thing moves uh, north of the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Then this thing gets really bombs out, gets down to 926 millibars already, 924, 917, eight days out. Now keep in mind, this is one model. We don't know how strong it's going to be. Take this with a grain of salt, but let's entertain this for a second. 
a 917 millibar system is a Category 5 hurricane. And this is coming from the European, not the GFS. So do I think it's going to uh, get to that strength? I'm not 100% sure. There's a lot of uncertainty on that front. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible, especially with the conditions that it's dealing with. We'll have to wait and see if it gets to that strength or not. But I wanted to go ahead and show you this. So that, and then this thing moves more to the north. There's a trough that develops, and it kind of starts staying out to sea, potentially impacting Bermuda. Anything after five days out, take with a huge grain of salt because there's been so much uncertainty over the last couple of days. I've barely been able to make out uh, what these models are saying, at least track-wise. Now we'll go ahead and show you the GFS. We'll go ahead and show you that. GFS has this thing organizing, rapidly strengthening up to a 940s millibar system, moves even further to the north than the European from the Lesser Antilles. GFS usually has more of a northward bias uh, sometimes, uh, but this thing continues to organize, gets down to a 946 millibar system, starts to expand in size but weaken quite a bit, but the GFS still has this thing potentially impacting the northeastern United States with the outer bands and then approaching Nova Scotia as either an extratropical or post-tropical cyclone. So that's what we have for the GFS. Keep in mind, anything after this point, take it with a grain of salt. Because there is so much uncertainty after this from all these models. Now, if I if there was like a consensus like with the Euro and the GFS and the CMC of where this may go, yeah, I, I could definitely give you a better idea of this. But the models are so uncertain about its track, it's kind of hard to make out. CMC has this thing organizing, developing, strengthens to a Cat 2, impacts the Lesser Antilles. Then there's a bit of a trough right, uh, right here. Then the ridge starts building back up again. It does make that turn to the north right there. So the CMC is having this more or less staying out to sea. But again, it's... There is a bit of a shift uh, from the uh, from the zero Z runs for for now, but from what I've been looking at the last couple of days, I'm waiting for the zero Z runs for tonight to kind of confirm what's going to happen. Now we'll go ahead and show you the Icon run. The Icon run has been pretty interesting. The Icon has this thing organizing and developing and strengthening to a hurricane, making a direct impact to the Lesser Antilles, Virgin Islands, potentially Puerto Rico and Hispaniola as this thing continues to weak as uh, rapidly strengthen down to a 950s millibar system right here. From what I am seeing, the European GFS and CMC are favoring a turn to the north. The Icon, JMA, and the NavGem are favoring more of a westward track. So the models are pretty split with what's going on. So that's our another reason why I'm so uncertain about this. So anything after five days, take it with a massive grain of salt because we have a lot of uncertainty. But here's what we can show you for the next five days. Here's the track models right here. Track models mainly have this thing pushing a little bit more to the north of the Lesser Antilles for now, but right now is right now. There could be there's a lot of factors that go into this. The Bermuda High could really strengthen again, push it further to the south, or could weaken even faster. We're not 100% sure, but for the next five days, it's expected to stay pretty much in the in, in the central tropical Atlantic and maybe the Atlantic Basin. Although we've seen some models, especially with the Icon and Navgym, having this impacting the Lesser Antilles. So. Those those are the track models right here. Intensity models, this is what we need to show you right here. Intensity models, the majority of these models now have this thing calling for a Category 4 hurricane, which is pretty interesting. It shows quite the confidence that this thing is going to intensify. Again, we're not 100% sure that this is going to happen. I'm not giving an official estimate because it's way too early out for that stuff. It's not even a tropical depression. But the majority of the models, based off of what I am showing you right here, are calling for, once again, major hurricane strength. And a majority of them still have this going up to Category 4 strength. We don't know if it's going to happen or not, but the models are saying it's likely that it will. Just take it as it is. We don't know what's going to happen. We'll have to wait and see once this thing develops. So now we're going to go ahead and show you those conditions I was talking to you about. Because remember, models are one thing, conditions are another. I keep saying it like a broken record, but it's so true. And the what reason I say that's going to be moving through the best conditions it could this season over the next seven, uh, seven days is because look at the global sea temperatures. 28, 29, 30 plus degrees Celsius, all the way from where it is right now, all the way to the Antilles, and all the way to the Atlantic Basin. 
that's uh, for those of you who don't know that conversion, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius is 82 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's more than enough for tropical development and hurricanes development right there. So just giving you a bit of a, some cliff notes right there. Ocean heat content, where it is right now, it's in an area of like 50 to 75 ocean heat content still, but it's about to enter this area in the western half of the main development region where it starts jumping up to 100, 125 OHC, has a lot more gas and a lot more fuel to work with as time continues to go on. So we'll have to pay attention to it and see how this system uses it. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear. Pretty much from where this is right here in the Atlantic all the way to the Bahamas, this is the best wind shear you could get for a tropical system right here. Wind shear is not going to do anything to stop this. So that's my main concern, especially with all of this. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some of the hurricane models right here. Here's the HMON. We're showing that, you that, the H wharf, the HAFS runs. The HMON, this goes out the next five days. These are more for intensity purposes. Uh, more or less. So this thing starts to organize and develop at a very rapid pace. In the next 24 hours, the HMON is forecasting this to become a hurricane at 994 millibars. And then things start to continue organizing and developing further. 48 hours out, we're down to a 975, 979 rather millibar system, which is indicative of a high-end Category 1. In extreme cases, low-end Category 2. But then look at how things start to ramp up. In the next, in set by 72 hours out, we're down to a, a system in the 950s millibar right here. And the winds are indicative of around major hurricane strength, around category three of winds of 120 miles per hour. Then we're down out to 96 hours, 940 millibar system, most likely a category four hurricane at this point. And then we continue out for the rest of it. The pressure gets down to the 920 millibars right here. That's at least a high-end Category 4 hurricane, at least intensity. Keep in mind, all this is completely out to sea for now, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. But the hurricane also does expand in size considerably from where we were just a couple of days ago. That wind field considerably expands, so we'll have to keep an eye on it for sure. Next one we're showing you is the HAFSA. Right here, we're showing you the 12Z. HFSA has this thing organizing, developing, starts strengthening in the next 60 hours or so. Things start to ramp up towards the end of the run. Gets down to the 940s, 930 millibar system right here. Likely a Category 4 hurricane, according to this right here. And this is still out to sea, a little bit east of the Lesser Antilles. Here is the HAFSB. Things get pretty interesting with this run. So strap yourselves in. This thing organizes, develops. It takes its time doing that. It starts to strengthen in the next 48 hours to a strong tropical storm. Then it starts to rapidly intensify all the way down. 950s, 940s, 930 uh, millibar system. Check this out. 917 millibars. It's kind of matching what the European is saying intensity-wise. So we'll go ahead and pluck a sound and kind of entertain this for a bit. So... Already, we're looking at 135 to 140 knots at the, surf at the surface, which is about Category 4, low-end Category 5 strength. Again, we don't know that this is going to happen or not. The conditions are good for this kind of stuff, but we don't know exactly what will happen. So take this with a grain of salt. I'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. And the one thing I need to stress to everyone is remain calm, continue to monitor the situation. I'll give you the data as it gets out, but we'll close the video out right here. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.